There is this saying that World War II was won by British intelligence, American guns, and Soviet blood. <gasps> and while there is some merit to it, why not change that whole saying so it's all about the Soviets and show the true power of communism? So that's what we're going to do today as we will be tackling the Race for Germany achievement where we will be showing how powerful Joseph's Soviet Union is. So of course, we shall start as Mr. Joseph Stalin in Iron Man mode since we want to do the achievement and we will need to destroy Germany after the fall of France as such, we will need to start with a historical focus on. But just capitulating Germany would be too easy, so the twist is that the Allies can't control one German core state. If they enter and take one state even for a millisecond, the achievement is long gone. So we will need to play as the Soviets and we shall follow the path of Marxism-Leninism. But don't worry, we shall bring back the Tsar at another time. While other contenders for, uh, for the position of the General Secretary of the Union are possible, Mr. Stalin is the strongest path in the game for Russia, and you will see why. For the first move of the game, we will want to eliminate Romania out of the game at the start, but there is a little problem. Ever since the La Resistance update, it, it, well, Romania is guaranteed by France at the start of the game. This would mean that unless you want to fight an early World War II with France, it's almost impossible to attack Romania. Unless you attack Turkey instead as it is guaranteed by Romania, so by taking down Turkey you get Romania for free without having to fight France. Damn, this is just like EU4 diplomacy at this point. <laughs> but things are starting to heat up, not only externally but internally as the political paranoia system has now been activated. So it's time for some great perch time, starting off with the Sin with Sinobiev and his clique. Fast forward with very treacherous plot members now dealt with, with our justification against Turkey being ready, it's now time we wait until Romania joins the war. But by this time, also enough time had passed for another Moscow trial, so let's start the second one in the meanwhile. The Romanians joined the war, I mean as expected, and after a failed naval invasion, which we don't talk about, those papers were burnt by the NKVD, don't mention it. We were able to break through in Bessarabia as the Romanians had to pull out some divisions for repelling the naval invasion with that we don't talk about. With this breakthrough we were able to push all the way to Moldavia, but first we need to deal with another Moscow trial if you know what I mean. After that the war was pretty much just pushing in provinces with low division counts as they were now starting to stretch pretty thin, I didn't help that I managed to pull some encirclements leaving them with even less troops. Overall, a pretty simple war, but an important one to fight, as we will want to make the war with the Germans all the while easier. But before we could finish up the Romanians, it was time for the third Moscow trial. This time it was against the military. The Romanians soon capitulated afterwards, and after taking Bessarabia for ourselves, of course, I decided to make them a puppet, as now with them, the Axis will be missing their strategic ally in the south. And just then, the approach of the military tr triggered, meaning bye bye, Mr. Tuchepepski. So, with the, him gone, it's time for a new field marshal, so Mr. Konyev, you just got a new promotion. And to be completely fair, I totally, actually, I actually totally forgot that I was still at war with Turkey, so I planned a naval invasion of Constantinople, and after securing the Straits, it was just a matter of pushing and dealing with the Turks. But while almost all the traitors had been dealt with, there was a still tra uh, traitor abroad, so it was time to prepare for a special operation. 
Oh, and while Mr. Jagora had lost it all this all this time long and almost got away with not being executed as part of the Great Purge, well, let's just say, just as the final Purge focus was about to be activated, sadly he was ratted out, so Mr. Jessup was now in charge of the NKBD. But finally, the last focus to end the Purge was now available with the third Moscow trial. During this t time, Turkey surrendered and all of the Turks in the comment section are now fuming at the sight of a free Kurdistan, but we are communists, so we, so we decide to liberate the workers, so it makes sense. And with the final purge, we can start rehabilitating the military as the political paranoia system is now finally gone. And we will need the military to be ready for the war against the Germans as we can't afford the, the allies taking a piece of the pie. Although this was not the only thing we were wrapping up as now it was time to cut the head of the snake in Mexico. We could either go in hot and try to raid his villa or try a more subtle approach to ensure maximum efficiency. So we shall go for the subtle approach. And actually this is actually pretty spot on as, well historically, the first attempt on Trotsky's life when he was in Mexico was orchestrated one, uh, by one of the famous Mexican muralists, David Alfaro Siqueiros, who uh, who by Stalin's orders raided his house and shot randomly praying that he would die, but of course Mr. Trotsky survived the assassination attempt and that's why the whole I speak story of him dying that way happened, so you know actually I should make a special video about all of this, but yeah, that's a story for another day. The next step in reforming the army shall be to restructure the whole thing, but in the meanwhile this would disrupt the chain of command, so it was a good thing that the wars were over, for now. And the snake is dead. I guess it's easier to use an ice pick than spraying a brain with a Thompson. But things were gearing up in Europe as now the Nazis in Germany wanted us to divide Poland between ourselves. And while this would be beneficial to us if we're planning to expand our influence in other parts of the world, this is not the case as we want to attack the Germans as soon as possible just after far France falls, so they don't have ex uh, well, extra time to use the extra industry, so no deal with the Nazi pigs. As this is with historical focuses turned on, you already know what happens next. Yeah! Poland failed as usual, and just as France was about to die, my heart almost stopped at the sight of this. <coughs> No, 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 no! Wait, 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 wait! Wait, 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 wait! Yes, the UK did a small naval invasion of Hanover. This actually became very problematic, as if the UK managed to just control the state of Hanover for one millisecond, yeah, this would be all over. Thankfully, France fell shortly after, and Germany pushed out the naval invading force. So with that, it's our signal to go in and defeat the Germans before they start getting out of hand. And so for now the war was on. For this endeavor, before the war I rushed the focuses to fix the LFOs, as those debuffs are nasty, and just pumped out the fires and casts as this is basically just the meta in the game. I tried to use the initial tank divisions, which are basically useless against good troops, but since I cut off Caught the Germans off guard, they managed to push into eastern Poland, encircling some troops in the process in the Lithuanian border. The divisions were pushing in the north, but meanwhile in the south, the troops were, ha were having some issues as the Germans deployed some tanks and, in some tiles, even managed to push into Ukraine proper. The war then became back and forward, then turned into a stalemate, and of course, what does the Paradox AI do in this case? They decided to just start running and charging to your troops in World War I fashion. And this just happens over and over and over again until the AI runs out of guns, thanks to all of their suicidal pushes. And since Romania is my puppet, they can't go through the south like they usually do. This uh, would cost the Germans a little over 1.5 million men, while only 300k soviets died in the process. 
This was not good for Germany as I, had, I finally had deployed my medium tanks, which were still not the greatest since the nerf the, that they got in the, well, in the DLC and the patch, but they still did the job during some encirclements. But the best thing was the tanks were pushing so well in the Ukraine region that we managed to capture a railway gone from the Germans. The Japanese though came to us with a proposal of a non-aggression pact. And since this game was all about taking down Germany, I accepted, meaning I had a free game over Europe. And I don't know about you, but I do love seeing those encirclements. After another million dead Germans, it was time to do a general push, and oh boy, was it a general push, as I don't know where the rest of the German army was located, since it said that they had like 181 divisions, but they were, they sure as hell were not in my border, and we pushed all the way to East Prussia and Poland, as we even managed to liberate Warsaw only two years after it fell. Factories were at a 110% limit, divisions continued to push, and more encirclements were accomplished until we had liberated in quotation marks, all of Poland, and mind you, this was 1941. Casualties had now reached 3.5 million Germans, and things were about to get way worse for them, as a lot of divisions were trapped in the Transylvanian mountains. Our offensive was so successful that, as we were reaching Berlin, only then the Lessons of War focus was available. Berlin fell while I was managing the Air Force, so that just shows how broken reforming the army early on playing as Russia is. Oh, and remember those guys trapped in, in, well, in Northern Transylvania? Well, they're dead. Jumping the German casualties to 4.2 million with only 700k Soviets dying in the process. Aren't those numbers lovely? At this point, since I forgot to mention, I had been working on collaboration governments in Germany for a while, well, at least. So, since they were about to capitulate, I had to make sure that I took Luxembourg, as Germany likes to core both Luxembourg and Alsace Lorraine. Thankfully, I think they have patched it so that the achievement is not lost if, well, if Germany decides to core Luxembourg, but since I recorded this in an old patch, I decided to rush to Luxembourg, and although at the end it was not even necessary as Germany did not have enough time to core, core it in my game. And just after sneaking my way through Germany, they surrendered, and the achievement was now unlocked. I could have also have unlocked the achievement We Don't Like Statistics if I had not already unlocked it in a different save game, but still, with the goal of the save game now done, I just had to capitulate Hungary and Italy. And as you can imagine, the, more, uh, the borders looked horrible. And since the achievement was now done, it was time to use some tool pack to fix those borders. 12 seconds late. With tool pack, I cleaned up the borders and made my iron curtain. Now I control all of Central and Eastern Europe. Uh, 
And that was the end of the video for today. I know today's video is shorter than usual, but I just wanted to show how powerful Stalin's USSR can be in the right hands, as the porridge is almost negligible compared to playing as Trotsky or Bukharin, and showing how anyone can really get the Race for Germany achievement really easily. Next week we will be doing the last achievement I had to do that was actually done on stream, for anyone that was curious, which was the Romanov's last laugh. So, yeah, I really hope you enjoyed the video. This was Defectus. You are dismissed, soldier.